Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and it's time to look at Corbot V's first full figure release outside of a convention exclusive. While the new head, new weapon recolor Savage came out first, Mugger is the full and proper release of this design in its most obvious colors with its most obvious head and weapon. Remember the guys who wanted Energon goodies? Of course you do. Going in reverse to set this video apart from the Savage review a little bit, let's start with Mugger's packaging default, Robot Mode. He's a stocky little ball of hunger and spikes. I love his proportions. At the pocket scale he's occupying, he looks nicely wide and thick when standing alongside similarly sized figures. His colors are totally on topic, combining a leafy green with a flat gray and pale lilac. Despite a pair of Beast Mode hands on his back, Mugger integrates his alternate form quite well into his bipedal robot body. And his head sculpt, it pleases me. It's got the fin, the frown, and the cheeky fish-lipped underbite that I want on an Alicon. Mugger's portrait is one of the highlights of the piece, as far as I'm concerned. This guy only includes one accessory, but it's nice and big. His bat blade vibroscythe is a tall, rude piece of weaponry, and separating it from the superconducting non-Newtonium plasma-filled pointy doom ball is very hard. You have to twist it loose, basically, and doing that may feel incredibly uncomfortable at first. I've now done this a bunch of times with three separate muggers, so I don't think there's a huge risk of breakage, but be aware that you might want to avoid plugging the staff all the way back into the superconducting non-Newtonium plasma-filled pointy doom ball's crevice once you've got the weapon in muggers' hands. And hey, it looks pretty good! There are two thickened spots for his fists to firmly grip onto. A spot of paint on the pokey bit or the scythe parts would have been a great cherry on top, but as an accessory, it totally fulfills its function. Mugger's got a lovely ball socket neck joint, lets him look left and right, look way, way up, look a little bit down, tilt his head quizzically, and do everything I like a ball socket neck to do. The transformation hinge that connects the staff of that ball socket neck also lets him look way down and hide his face or just straight up turtle up a little bit. Uh, also, if you want to, you can make this a giant crocodile alligator man. But why would you do that? Fun! That's why. Ball socket connection on the shoulders means he can move them forwards and backwards happily. If you move the shoulder pad out of the way, he can also move them outwards all the way. The shoulder pad pivots on this spike. The spike is like the peg sticking through a hole in the shoulder pad. This side's pretty nice and tight. This side feels a bit looser. On all three of the Alicons, it kind of felt similar. Uh, they feel much tighter than my copy of Savage, though, so this is still an improvement. There's a straight-up bicep swivel right above the big, meaty elbow hinge with its 90 degrees. There is a wrist swivel, which helps with staff holding poses. There's no waist joint. I don't really see where there's room for one, what with this being a splitty openy part for transformation. So, uh, I can somewhat accept that. Also, if you want to give this guy crazy vestigial T-Rex arms, which feels like a suitably bestial thing for an Alicon, you can! I feel satisfied with that. I... I felt satisfied with it on Savage, too, but these are the right colors for it. Uh, the tail can swish. Uh, there's a ball socket here, a ball socket here, and a ball socket on the gray tip which is, I think, the most limited of the three. But altogether, you can get a nice bit of swish here. Might see that again later on when I do posability for the beast mode. The hips are on ball socket joints that cannot do the full Van Damme, but they do have a cut in the top to let them do this sort of 45 degree out, and they can kick forward all happily. There is no thigh swivel. The entire thigh is hollow because it basically absorbs half of the undergroinal chunk. Um, there is a big thick knee joint, which does 90 degrees like the elbow, and I kind of wish that this knee could have had a swivel connection above it somehow. That would have involved maybe elongating the leg more than uh, would have been aesthetically comfortable, but I really like me my thigh joints. Uh, on the bright side, there is a ball socket ankle, which allows for what you could call a boot cut, to at least have the feet pointing in different directions. And uh, there's a decent amount of tilt on here, forwards and backwards, as well as side to side. Uh, it's not super deep, it's just enough to allow for a bit of an A stance. If you aren't using that at all, you can also just pop those clothes to give him a solid fused swivel footable boot. But uh, why would you do that? Well, if you're following instructions for going to the beast mode, that's why, even though you might leave that unlocked for the beast mode as well. So posability on this guy is pretty good. He's missing a waist and missing thigh swivels, I can't see how a waist would have fit in there, but man, I wish the thighs swiveled. 
All the joints feel nice and uh, tight and beefy. This is the only weak one, really, right here. And uh, this little guy feels nice and thick and beefy. Like, he can, uh, if you ball him up so that he's not going spines first, he can take a little bit of a ride. And uh, it doesn't seem to be too worse for wear about it. He has a lot of paint on him, so I'm not going to do that too often. But uh, that one was for you, ladies and gentlemen. Just for you, those of you who are Tetrajet Test OG crew. Being a smaller figure, Mugger has a rather straightforward transformation. It's not too long, not too simple, and everything moves somewhere. Really, the only things that let me down are the low number of solid click locks and the fact that the arms have to move out of the way of things in a rather specific order. The entire little shoulder area is the toy's major source of finicky motion, while the rest of the design moves in big, happy chunks. Also, because it's easy to forget, I'll just tell you right now. You want to swivel his robot fists 180 degrees before you start everything, or you're going to try to do that right at the very end and everything's going to be in the way. It's going to be annoying. 180 degrees. 180. And this is an F friggin' Alicon! The shapes are unmistakable, even with a creative liberty taken here or there. The main body has a great silhouette with a big layered tail and spikes aplenty. The little arms look even littler due to the lack of any kind of shoulder mass, which does them no favors whatsoever. The big bad gator head is a little flatter and a touch wider than I usually imagine it to be, but that's hardly a game changer for me, which may literally be a thing I already said in the Savage review. The colors add a load of quality to this mode, particularly on that jawsome cranium. The paintwork looks great from the metallic eyeball to its matte gray eyelid to the little ringlets of darker gray on the forehead spines to the individually picked out teeth surrounding a crimson painted tongue mush. Mugger's Alicon mode is bright, lively, and clean. It also has zero weapon storage for the staff accessory, outside of, like, balancing it on his body or inside his mouth, but then you might damage those teeth. Don't do it! This little dude's arms, they can swivel on a hinge forward and backwards. They can rotate at their bicep. There's a ball socket elbow that helps you rotate that bicep. It also can go out like this. That's it, though. So I, I, I really wish that there was, like, one more joint to let them go downwards a little bit. Because otherwise they are kind of permanently, I don't know, outwards and grabbing at stuff. That's kind of topical for an Alicon. But uh, it's like the biggest missing thing on this mode for me. The jaw can open big and wide, bite down on stuff. Don't put your finger in here because, oh god, that hurts! Don't do that. Uh, those are really sharp. Uh, you can also use the transformation joint to have them look forward a little bit. Now, Savage, this would create a uh, noticeable gap here. The mohawk fin of the Alicon robot head does a decent job of filling in that gap in profile and just making this seem a bit more smooth and natural without like a straight up V wedge cut out of there. Uh, the knees are usable in this mode and then if you pop the ankles out they are usable as well. Uh, there's no outward motion though. Once again, a thigh swivel here would have just added that extra little bit of bestiality and uh, the tail can wag as it could in robot mode. You can also use the transformation joint to angle it down a little bit more. You can use this transformation joint to do that Although this accomplishes just as much and looks a lot smoother. So, uh, he's a, he's a nice little Alicon, you know? Uh, balancing him without those ankle joints popped out can be a bit of, uh, a bit of trouble. Also, if you do want to use the ball socket hips, you can untransform his hips a little bit to gain a little, a little, uh, wider range of motion. But that starts making everything a bit, I don't know wibbly in there, and I kind of like how this all locks together, so I don't do that myself, but it is an option if you want more posability on your Alicon. As it is, I'm satisfied enough. Ha! Mugger's third mode is a modification to his beast mode, so thank goodness we're already there. No dumb show-offy jump cut tricks, just raw transformation footage of a very simple transformation. I guess if I had one qualm, it would be the lack of lock-in points for the legs, and if I had a second qualm, it would be the lack of anything for the Alicon arms. But hey, now he's a double-barreled photon blaster with a 5mm peg surrounded by a whole pile of Alicon jaw. The sculpted and painted muzzles do a lot to make this mode believable, as it otherwise does look a whole lot like a robot monster chewing on the hand of whoever's holding him, though that might be by designer intention. 
It's a cute extra, most probably drawn from the fact that this toy was designed during the Combiner Wars era of Legend Transformers, and I've had enough goofy fun with it to feel satisfied. Either way, it's almost entirely unintrusive to the design of the figure, outside of an extra tail hinge. Mugger is a lovely addition to the pocket-scale transforming robot scene, representing one of my favorite kooky 80s designs really well, and arriving just in time to join the upcoming Titans Return Legends Gnaw Horde. And I am ready for a horde. I had a chance to film a trio of Muggers before passing the other two along, and I love how these little dudes look en masse. Two Muggers and three Gnaws remains my plan for the future. Maybe three Muggers and five Gnaws, we'll see. Coming in at an Iron Factory competitive price, Corbot V's little Alicon manages to attain a positive bang for your buck status, very much thanks to its overall build quality. Both modes look swell, the transformation satisfies despite its shoulder-borne phase of finickiness, and my critical qualms mainly come down to a desire for a little more thickness and articulation, either of which I admit I am not sure how to actually implement without upping the size or the retail price of the piece. The design is pleasing, the paint is clean, the colors pop, and the instructions get properly ridiculous in their final panel. What a time to be alive. Once again, I'm elated to see a nice big list of credits on both the instructions and the box flap. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and Corbot V's return to the game has my 86 movie buzz all a throbbing. What with the new Blu ray and Titans Returns' his enormous love for the post season 2 era of G1, I need me some pocket scale quintessons and courtroom staff. ASAP!